Hello boys and girls, I'm Pearl of Wisdom and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today we're going to be looking at the possibility of Mark Shifley being traded. That's right, Mark Shifley of the Winnipeg Jets. And a lot of questions will be abound to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at an article that I thought was pretty cool. That kind of gave me an indication that it's possible they could be moving on. Outside of that article, we're going to look at the logical reasons why they might trade Shifley and maybe others. And um, I know people are like, I thought you were going to do a Horvat trade video. Well, I was. And I still think it's possible that Horvat's going to get traded. But the more I look at it, the more I think it's very possible he's not traded, that they will find the money for to have a solid top three in Vancouver. So I went away from it. And that's what I do. I don't just throw stuff out there. There's backing to it. It has to be logical to me. And if you look at my other videos, like we just did a person most likely to be traded from every team video. Um, look at some of the videos where I predicted where players may go. Like to Foley to Calgary when I nailed that. It, it, we come pretty close. We had Goudreau going to Columbus as the third team. And when you watch that video, I was like, I really don't see how Philadelphia and New Jersey can do this. And then he ends up going to Columbus. So anyways, that's the sort of thing we do here at Pearls of Wisdom Ministries. So that's what we're going to do. Now, before you do that, I want you to subscribe to the channel. Tell me what you think about Mark Shifley being traded and everything I'm about to say here. You just press the subscribe button. Hit the bell. There's a little bell there. That'll bring you notifications up for when all this fine frolic comes. Because I do this all the time. About all NHL teams. And you want to be part of it, right? Right. Okay, so we're going to look at this article that I thought was pretty cool. And then we're going to look at um, Shifley himself, the Winnipeg Jets, what they might want in return. And then we're going to look at six teams that he may go to. All right, the article. Winnipeg almost traded Mark Shifley. This is what I found interesting. This was September 15th, 2022, not too long ago. It's from NHL Trade Rumors, who you think it's rumors, they're just pulling stuff out of their butt. I actually think this, uh, I find this uh, publication very good. Um, they usually have a lot of backing for what they say, and I find it very logical as well. The Winnipeg Jets are looking for a bounce back season after a very disappointing campaign. Sounds like the roster was very close to being blown up as reports have surfaced that center Mark Shifley was almost traded. Uh, Murat At Atez of The Athletic, great publication, Subscription required, well worth the subscription money for the small yearly subscription for it. It's fantastic. If the Jets had Dubois locked up long term, there's a chance that they would have shot star score Mark Shifley. Um, they couldn't get it done. They couldn't get Dubois done long term. And there, of course, has been rumors as his agent has basically came out and said he was really always wanted to play in Montreal and all those things like that. And uh, it sounds like Dubois is going to go test the market at the end of the year. Now, Dubois, has since name, his name has been tied to the Canadians, as I already said. Uh, Shifley, on the other hand, is looking to improve and become more of a 200-foot player. He was a 200 foot player at one time. He just looked absolutely diabolically bad last year. His effort in the defensive zone was terrible and it played out in not only the eye test, but analytics as well. Absolutely brutal. And that usually, to me, is a sign of a guy who's just. He was frustrated at the end of the year, as it says in the article. And uh, that happens when you lose but when you lose and you were playing like you should lose like you gave up almost uh, it makes it more and more likely that it may happen but okay 
I think that this could happen. I think there's a very good chance that this could happen, even if Dubois is not going to come back. I could see Dubois getting traded. I could see Wheeler getting traded. And I could see Shifley getting traded. I know the first thing Winnipeg Jets fans were like, I don't want to trade Shifley. Let's trade Wheeler. And, and some, I'm on the when I'm on the boards with Winnipeg fans, they a lot of them want both of them traded. And I think that would be the smart thing to do right about now. And the reason why I didn't do Wheeler in this deal, because Wheeler is much more difficult to trade. At $8 million a year, and really he as well has not really put great effort in the defensive zone as well. But And he's $8 million a year. He's older. It'd be a more difficult trade. That's why I'm going to look at Shifley. And here we see he is he's still a big boy. At one time, he was a good defensive player. He lost his will. And any team picking him up is going to have to believe that a new life in a new situation will bring him back. Now, that being said, uh, first of all, let's go to he's he's got only $5 million, $6 million for the next two years, which is pretty solid for a guy who is still a point over a point a game player. His defensive side, the defensive side was not good, but he did get over a point a game. He can produce, he's produced his whole career around a point a game. That's a center. So I think there are a lot of, I think there are teams out there that would give him a shot. Um, probably would have to look at retaining or something of that nature, but we'll look into that as we get into every team. One thing we also have to note here is that he has a 10-team no-trade clause. So, for instance, the first team that we look at is probably unlikely, but we're going to go basically from what I kind of what I think is the most likely to the least likely here to go to, uh, to that he may go to. But, so that's what Shifley is. That's where Shifley's at. Um... And I think Winnipeg is probably looking to rebuild. If you're going to lose Shifley, you're going to lose Wheeler, you're going to lose Dubois. Let's look at Winnipeg in general here. You're looking at a rebuild. You're going to keep call. They're going to. They would keep call Connor. He's too. He's young. He's too good, and he's young. Nikolai Ehlers, 26, but Dubois, Wheeler, Shifley, probably looking at maybe even Morrissey, um, Dylan. It's kind of a scorch the earth rebuild here, but I think it's it just didn't work. This core didn't work, and I think by the end of this year, uh, they will be able to. He, Shovel Day Off will have enough ammunition for his owner and the sponsors to say, "We're going nowhere. We got to change this up. We're going to do it all over again." Here's my plan: three year, four year, what have you. All right. First team, Philadelphia Flyers. And uh, do I think this is a wise move by the Philadelphia Flyers? Not particularly, but I think that they would have interest based on the fact that this team never really rebuilds. I don't, I, I, my inkling is that they are not using the rebuild word because they're afraid of what's going to happen, but they're actually are kind of rebuilding. Sean Couturier might be out for the year now. You know, if that's the case, they don't do this deal. But on the other hand, they've made so many moves that it looks like they're not rebuilding that it's possible that they're not going to. They're just going to keep on banging this drum. And if that were the case, I think they would be in on Shifley. Six million for the next two years. I know their cap is not looking good, but if Couturier is out, they're going to have room for him. Uh, they could sign him past there, past his next two years, which he would be 32 at that time. And if Couturier were to come back, he'd have a solid top three. What would they give up? Oh, I didn't get into the fact that Winnipeg would be looking for probably a lot of defense here, and, but they would be looking for anything if they're going to trade everything. Um, you got Cam York, who I think is going to not rock it pretty quick. Every time I've seen Cam York, he's always been better than I thought he would be at the same projected level. 
um, at, the, at the age that he was, like when I've seen him in World Juniors, every time I've been like, wow, this guy is going, he is growing as a player fast. So I could see them using Sandheim in this deal to make the money work. York goes up there, which is not ideal to have a guy that young playing top four. However, here's another thing. Winnipeg could package some players here. They could go even Morrissey and Shifley. And then Philadelphia would have to give up their first in 2023. I just don't think that's going to happen. The other other ways that they could do it, you could put maybe Hayes back. You know, Winnipeg Jets now, you know, they don't want to rebuild either, but they want to get a really good center back. Um, he has a 12-team no-trade clause. Is Winnipeg on there? I'm not, I don't know. It, it just seems kind of unlikely, but I do think Philadelphia would be trying, would try a little bit at least. They would put some feelers out there and see if something like Sanheim, a second round pick, and Bobby Brink works. You know, I don't think it's going to work. But Philadelphia Flyers fans, can you come up with something better? You know, are you going to give up Owen Tippett now? I think most Philadelphia Flyers fans wouldn't like this deal at all. Wouldn't like this deal at all. I bet you. In fact, I talk to most Philadelphia Flyers fans, and they think, it's time to rebuild. So the organ I don't think the organization gives the fans of the Philadelphia Flyers enough credit to know when it's time to do something. On the other hand, it's true that most people that go to the hockey games are not diehard fans of hockey. And basically for those those people, if the team ain't winning, they're not going. So it's a difficult situation. But um, if they're not going to rebuild and Katuri is going to be out, I could see them doing something like this. Tell me what you think about that, Philadelphia Flyers fans. And we're going to go to the next team. Sub subscribe to the channel, Philadelphia Flyers fans, right now. You just go press the subscribe button. If you're on Facebook, you might have to go over to YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Hockey's coming. We're going to be doing tons of play-by-play -play and live Better play-by-play -play than you're going to hear on the TV. I'll tell you that right now. Frolic is endless. All right. Boston. Boston Bruins. And I think they would be in on this, uh, especially if they're in a playoff spot, mostly because this is the year, man. You brought everybody back. You got to go for it. Now, I think most Boston fans would be like, we need defense. And you're right. You do need defense, but hear me out. They're having, having an, I don't think David Krejci really is going to be, a, be a, able to be a high-minute player this year. Not for the full season. And that being the case, when you get into the playoffs, you're going to want a guy like David Krejci to be a little more rested than a full 82 or at least high minutes all the way through. So if you brought somebody like Shifley in to play with Hall and Pasternak, Shifley still a fantastic offensive player. And I think if he got into a team like Boston, he would light a fire under his butt and he would get back to playing strong defensively again. At $6 million for the next two years, that's probably Boston's window here to be successful. So what would Boston give back? Now here's, I think this is where your ears might pick, perk up and go, okay, maybe it isn't such a bad idea. I think you could work Charlie Coyle into this deal. Uh, does he have a no movement clause? Yeah, it's a 10 team no trade list. Just pray to God that Winnipeg isn't on it. Um, but Winnipeg loves their big centers. They love their big guys. He does put up good points. Uh, if he's willing to go to Winnipeg and he's happy to be there, I think they would do it mostly just to make the money work, to make the deal work. And if that's the case, then 
there's not really value in Charlie Coyle here. It actually gives more value to Winnipeg in the sense that, I mean, Winnipeg will now be like, okay, we're taking Charlie Coyle. We don't need Charlie Coyle. So you're going to have to come up with a lot more in this deal to get a Mark Scheifele. So what do they have? The first round pick in 2023, gone. I would say that would that would be the first thing right off the get-go. No way you want to trade anybody off your defense. In fact, you don't want to really trade anybody besides Charlie Coyle off your roster. You'd go down into... We would go down into like Jack Studnicka, whatever they got. They don't have much for, but it don't matter anymore. Like it doesn't matter in Boston. What are we going to do? We have no kids. We're going to have to go through a large rebuild. Yes, you are. Period. End of story. Forget about it. When the rebuild happens, it's going to be shitty already. So if they're willing to take anything in your prospect pool, Give it away. Langenbrunner, Lore, whatever you got to give up. Besides, I think they have one guy that I wouldn't give up here, and I can't find him here at the second. He would be in the loaned category. Oh, yeah, right. Fabian Lizell. That's the only guy I wouldn't give up in this deal. Anyone else. Anyone else, your, their first round pick, and uh, you're not giving up Forbert. Forget about it. I know you all want Forbert to go over there. He's not going there. That's not happening. It's not happening. Oscar Steen. There you go. Oscar Steen, first round pick. Jack Akim, whatever you got. That's all of those guys. Now, yeah, you're not going to have any kids left. It don't matter. You don't have any anyways. You need to win in the next two years. You bring in somebody like Shifley, and you have a chance. And then, you know, for the next decade, I hope you're not like 10 years old and you got to go through your teen years with the Boston Bruins sucking so bad. But that's probably somewhat something like what's going to happen, unless they keep on trying to hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Anyways, I would do something like that. I would with this roster. What would you do, Boston fans? Subscribe to the channel. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Would you do a move like this? Do you agree with my win now uh, attitude and forget about tomorrow in this situation? All of that. Okay, next. Dallas Stars. It's amazing how many times it's the best teams are in the same division as the team that is wanting to be traded. In this case, I don't think it would matter all that much. Um, when, when If Winnipeg's going to do a teardown build, rebuild, which I think it's possible that they will be doing here and probably would be the reason why they would be doing this deal, then put it, trading a 31-year-old Shifley to Dallas is not that big of a deal. Uh, would it work for Dallas? Absolutely. Jamie Ben moves to the left side, Shifley in the middle. Say again, you got a veteran line there. Hopefully, he can get a fire under Sagan and Ben's ass so they can start putting up offense. But it's a pretty solid second line, regardless, even if they are, they're just the way they are. Dallas is winning in win now mode always. I don't think they ever stop being win now mode. I don't know when they will ever rebuild, but uh, they're probably going to be close to a bubble team or, you know, like they were last year. It's a tough division that they're in. If they're in a spot, though, you can be pretty much rest assured if they can buy, they will buy. And I wouldn't be surprised if Shifley would be a team, somebody that they want to buy. One of the reasons is, is they don't appear to pay that much attention to analytics. They just like high offense, big guys that can, you know, pound the boards and all that kind of stuff like that. When Shifley is on, that's exactly what he can do. So um, who the problem is, is the return here, really. I think Winnipeg, again, would be trying to look at defense. If, the, if Winnipeg's going to really rebuild this team, they're probably going to learn that you better do it from the defense out. Otherwise, you're scrambling for defense 
and it looks as bad as their defense is, which is really bad. Um, I, as I mentioned before, Winnipeg would probably be willing to, to, to bring a defenseman back to make it work. Cap space. I, I haven't even mentioned that in all these deals. Shifley will be about $3 million at the deadline. Most of the moves I'm doing here, there's a player going back. So it covers up the, uh, the cap space situation, at least for this year. They can work on the rest of the cap space next year. Dennis Gurianov was my most likely to be traded from the Dallas Stars in my uh, most likely to be traded videos. And I think that would be one of the guys that maybe they would give, they would use in this situation to make the cap work a little bit. And Winnipeg might as well give him a shot. I don't think he's huge value. There's going to be a lot more that has to go with this. I think the 2023 first is pretty much a for sure. And really, it's hard to gauge now how much value general managers are going to put on that pick. But it's a deep draft. So I would say Garyanov, a 2001 first, or 2023 first, possibly somebody like Thomas Harley. Something like that. I like Thomas Harley a lot. Uh, I think at this stage they could fill his spot with someone else, though. Uh, Nils Lundqvist can move up. Is going to be, you know, Colin Miller. I've seen him play left defense before. Yeah, he, he's not too bad at it. You could bring Lund, Lundqvist up. He needs, they're going to have to find a spot for Lundqvist anyways. Um, either that or Miller can move over to the left and Lundqvist could already be, and Harley might not even make the lineup this year. But I think down the road, Harley's going to be a good defenseman. And they certainly need, where is he from too? Oh, he's from the United States, but he has Canadian citizenship. I wonder what the story behind that is. But he doesn't have much of a choice if he gets traded anyways. He doesn't have a no-movement clause. He's still young. I could see a deal something like that, but maybe getting it done. However, I think there's better teams than that. But Dallas Stars fans, what would you think about a deal? Something similar to that. Studnik, maybe Faxa. The first in 2023 and Thomas Harley. I know I talk to a lot of fans that they're, oh, we, Harley's good, they'll say. Well, yeah, he's good. What do you think? You're just going to give trash? <laughs> you got to give up good players, man. It's the only way that works. All right. <laughs> Carolina Hurricane. And there's a two more teams after this. So it's like my third most likely team. And I would say... This would happen if Kasperi Kokaniemi is not ready. If he's not ready to take that number two role, or yeah, number two role up the middle, and they're going into the playoffs thinking, ah, you know what, our top six might not be there. Jordan Stahl's not getting any younger. He's 34 years old. He's declining. And uh, I, this is their window is kind of now in Carolina. Like they really got to start pushing here. I think I could definitely see this happen. If, happen if Kasperi Kapanen isn't ready, uh, or if he doesn't work out in the middle, and they got to play him on the wing anyways. Also, could see that happening. Two years at six million dollars a year. I think that Carolina can handle that all right. So who would be going back in this situation? That would be the tough thing. Um, do they have cap space? I can't remember now. I saw it, but no team really does. Okay, I, right now it's minus two, so they got to make room. But at the deadline, it's only going to be three million for. Uh, it's only going to be three million for Shifley. One of the guys I could see, because he's a guy that just keeps on, is out there all the time when it comes to trading, especially if Andre Kasha has a good year, is Marty Nietzsche's. Marty Nietzsche's been talked over and over and over again, possibly could be traded. Uh, he's making $3 million. 
Um, Chris Drury could be part of the deal. The uh, two million also includes Max Pacioretty, who doesn't go on IR, so they'd actually have four million until Max Pacioretty comes back. And by that time, you have more injuries. Uh, the way they, the way you bring down players, bring up players, you acquire cap space over the year. They would figure it out. And Carolina, then uh, Winnipeg retains. There's a lot of things that can happen here. One of the things is I don't think defense is going to be in this situation. I think it would be like Nietzsche's and and or Drury. A, my good buddy, uh, Lorne, who is really good with uh, prospects, is super high on Alexander Nikishin. And I think he could be a part of the deal here. So like Nietzsche's Nikishin. And a 2004 first for Shifley, something like that. Carolina fans, what would you say about that? You think about that. Shifley, Teravinen, uh, either Jesper Fast or Andre Kasha. Not to mention they have so many young players coming up right now that could make the lineup as well this year. It is stacked. They are stacked as far as players in the in the minors that are ready to come up passion apparently he has just been rocking in russia so if it's not if it's if it's jack drury that's part of the deal then you have nietzsche's terabinen and shifley that's a great top six fantastic top six he's a veteran when he's on he plays great two-way brenda moore would probably get that back him and he's a point of game guy up the middle, man. Kasperi Kelkiniemi can go down to the third spot or play left side, uh, and the depth would be just fantastic. So I could definitely see it happen. Tell me what you think. Subscribe to my channel, Carolina Hurricane fans, and we'll take a and uh, take a look at all the stuff I've done there. We do this all the time. New York Islanders. That's my second team that I could see Shifley going to. And I do that, I say this because they have been looking for top six. They were apparently in on Kadri, and uh, that didn't work out. They were in on Goudreau. They love their veterans here. And uh, they need some help for Barzal. Now, this, how much does this really help? Brock Nelson can go to the left side. I like Brock Nelson on the left side. He's fine. He's great. You put Shifley with Nelson and Bailey, and you bring Lee down with Barzal. Now you're starting to see a top six that looks pretty, pretty darn good. Well, what about Beauvillier, you say? Well, I think finally this he would be part of this deal. That's one of the things that, that there would... Yeah, you're getting older. I mean, I know y'all hate that, Islanders fans, but is okay. Let's put it this way: having uh, Anthony Beauvillier there, being younger, when these guys are like a couple of your years, is it going to matter that you have a young Beauvillier? It's, like, there's not going to be anybody around him, anyways. <laughs> you know, it's got to the point where a 25 year old in this roster, by the time he's 27, 28. This team will be in full rebuild mode, and he's going to be out of place. You're not even going to need him. So, Anthony Beauvillier, your first round draft pick in 23, and maybe Keeper Bellows or something like that. Would you do a deal like that to have a killer top six and maybe have a chance to win a cup? I don't know if I would. I don't think I would. But I wouldn't have made my lineup like this anyway. You know, I wouldn't have did the lineup as it's done here. So I, mean, I think a lot of fans are kind of would agree with that. But the question is, will it happen? Maybe even it's not really about would you do it? I could see it happening for sure. The number one place for Shifley is the Colorado Avalanche. 
they're going to have a little bit of cap room. But the reason why I like this the most is they have so much. It, it, you know, it depends on how Alex Newhook progresses. But he's only two years, and then he's going to be a free agent, Scheifele. He's at $6 million a year. You really Do you really want to go into – I mean, I know you got Rodriguez there. Honestly, he's not a second-line center. He, he's going to fit in there all right. He can, you can put him all over the lineup, but he's not what I would want as a second-line center going into the playoffs. He can move anywhere. You play right wing. And uh, Shifley would fit in there with Lekkonen and Landeskog. Really nice offensively. If he can come back to playing defense like we know he can, which might nix this deal anyways because Joe Sackick is a huge analytics guy. And when he looks at Shifley's analytics from last year, he might be like, yeah, no. But if he thinks he can get Shifley back to what he was two, three years ago, then yeah, I think he would be, yeah, yeah, let's give this a shot. So... I don't know. Newhook is not going to be part of the deal. You could actually put Rodriguez in the deal. And you could look at JT Comfer. But I think the guy, if Bowen Byram screams out of the gate and plays like as amazing as I think he's going to be going to, it is possible that Samuel Gerard might be on his way. They might be able to use him. And not only that, Winnipeg could add a defenseman too, so they have another defenseman. Like Dylan. Brandon Dylan. They went out and got Manson last year. I wonder if they'd be interested in Dylan, who is 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 not bad defensively. He's pretty good. He's big, he's strong, he brings the pain. And you could have Dylan and uh who's Dylan already? Yeah, Dylan's a right winger. It would work perfect. Byram moves up. You play Manson with Byram. And uh, yeah, Manson with Byram. Jack uh, Eric Johnson can play both sides. So you could play Johnson and Dylan together. Or you could go with a lefty to play with Johnson. DeMello is, is a solid defensive defenseman. Oh, no, sorry. Logan Stanley. Uh, Bill Ahinala. Brendan Dillon, though. He plays left defense. They have him on the right side. That would be my guy. Sorry about that. Uh, left defense, right. So he would take the spot. You got Dillon and uh, Manson. On the third pairing, Johnson and Byram second pairing. And uh, that lineup is looking pretty solid, pretty physical. And then you got Shifley up the middle up here. Huge. And as far as Gerard is concerned, I would almost do this straight up. I wouldn't tell Joe Sackett that. But Samuel Gerard is one of the most underrated defensemen in the league. And they so need a guy like that. You probably could scrape more out of this, like a JT Comfer, or like I said, Yvonne Rodriguez. But to get to get Samuel Gerard in this deal, I like it a lot. Tell me what you think, Colorado fans. This would be something that would happen to the deadline, probably somewhere around there, maybe a little bit sooner. But would you like a Shifley in your number two spot? I know I certainly would, as long as I can get him playing defense again. Uh, and if anybody can do that, Bednar is the guy. That's my full 42. Those are the guys that teams that I think most likely would pick up a guy like Shifley. If, uh, if the Horvat deal does come up again, where I start to think, I'll do that. I'm going to do a whole lot of trade stuff, though, because I love doing it. And I'm going to be doing live content. Really, really soon with Peyton on the radio. I'm the analyst. He is the play-by-play -play guy. So subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. See you on my next one at Pearls of Wisdom.